You know, it's been a great year for the Big Three. Co-founders Jeff Parmitz, Ice Cube. What a great vision the Big Three has been for so many people. Our fans love the game. The players love to play in the game, and it doesn't get any better, right? You see how much fun and passion these guys play with? It is so much fun to watch. So professional three-on-three -three basketball is here to stay. It's an Olympic sport, and the Big Three is leading the way. Now, I'll talk to you a little bit about the people who make it work behind the scenes. You may not know about. I'll go with Jeff Quartness first. I mean, excuse me, Amy Trask first. Amy is our chairman of the board. She makes everything happen behind the scenes. Uh, Q is phenomenal day to day, but these guys also put in 18, 20 hour days as well. And so I think it's important to hear from them because their contributions are what make the big three so successful. And I'm honored and extremely grateful to work with two such esteemed individuals. Jeff, one of the greatest entertainment lawyers in the business. Uh, Co-founder of the Big Three, Harvard, Harvard, Northwestern Harvard Law. Does it get any better? You talk about our executive team. It's kind of like a dream team. Amy Trask, CEO of the Oakland Raiders for how many years? A lot. 30 years. <laughs> and so Mark Garagos. 12. <laughs> Mark Garagos is not here, but our executive team is as good as any executive team in any sport. And I'll pass the mic on to these two because they don't, you may not know a lot about them, but they are what makes the Big Three so special. Thank you. I will tell you a very special moment and then I'll turn it over to Jeff. When we discussed hiring Nancy Lieberman, I was in a room with Jeff Pontenitz, Ice Cube, and Clyde. And at no point whatsoever was her gender raised. And you all heard me teasing and saying, wow, they're letting women in sports now. Huh, go figure. I started my career in 1982, roughly, 82, 83. And as I said, I was 12. And to sit in a room with Ice Cube, with Jeff, with Clyde, and come in. And Nancy Lieberman, Lieberman's name was floated as a head coach. Not one of those men referenced her gender. And Clyde contacted Corey McGetty and Katina Mobley, and her gender was never referenced. It's not an issue. This is a league where our co-founders and co-CEOs, Jeff Quanton, it's an ice cube, hire without regard to race, gender, ethnicity, religion, or any other individuality, which has no bearing whatsoever on whether someone can do a job, and in that regard, they are running a business the way everyone in this country should run a business. So with that, Jeff, I turn it over to you. It is my great fortune to again work with men like you and Cube and Clyde, as I did with Al Davis, who don't give a damn whether we're women, men, about our race, our, our ethnicity, our religion. They just care whether we can get a job done. It's, it's so funny because I grew up a Raider fan. So I knew Amy before. I, I guess it was a stalker of sorts. Um, I've, I've actually known Amy 25 years. And Ice Cube has known Amy that long, and Ice Cube and I have worked together for 23 or so years. Um, and it's been an incredible journey. Um, Clyde Drexler is the happiest guy in the world. I say it all the time because, I mean, look at him. This is how he always is. No matter what's going on, good, bad, he's just like, man, it's all going to be good. It's all going to be good. And, uh, I don't always think that, <laughs> but he's always right. Um, so I just, you know, hearing uh, hearing Big Baby like talk from the heart, and um, you know, Corey, I get to spend a lot of time talking to him, and you know, when when he got injured, that you know, that first game, you know, he didn't quit on a leak. He came out. He, he, he helped us do a lot of things on the PR side. And he said, I'm, I'm gonna get better. That's not an easy injury to come back from. And he really came back. And, uh, and then, you know, you look at guys like, like Amari Sotomayor, you know? 
who uh, I'm friends with. And uh, he dissed me here a lot. <laughs> um, but he came, you know, and, and, and he was unbelievable tonight. And, you know, I know there's some NBA teams talking to him, and he, you know, he's got the fever again. And, 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 and that, it's just a great thing, because I love that. And seeing, and seeing that excitement, and then seeing a guy like Mahmoud who, I mean, wow. I, that performance tonight was insane. And, 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 I mean, look at this guy's trajectory, you know? He's the first guy, you know, to, to take a knee or bow his head for the anthem, and, and he paid the price for it. But he never gave up on, on his passion. I mean, that, that's, that's kind of cool. It's a great story because they could not beat him. They could not beat him. So, I mean, we saw some amazing basketball, um, but I'm really proud, you know, of, of what we're doing. I think this league is about, you know, I come from talent management, Ice Cube obviously, you know, is as authentic as anyone alive. Um, there's a reason why Amy, you know, was with Al Davis, who would be disgusted if he saw what was going on in the NFL today. I mean, maybe you feel different, but the owl, the owl that I grew up revering from age seven and on, you know, I mean, he, he, he's the owl that gave players a second chance, you know. He gave executives a second chance, too. Yeah. You know, he, he, he believed in people, he made, and he helped them believe in themselves. And then they had to take it from there, but, but he, he, he gave them that shot. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the league has just been so benefited by Clyde. The, the respect everywhere in the world. You know, we traveled to China together, and he's just as popular there as here, you know. Um, and, and it's so much work, but um, it, 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 it's really worth it. Because I think that, uh, I think players, you know, need to be more empowered. I think that we're in a time where people, you know, identity politics and everyone's screaming and yelling at each other. And it's so good, you know, sports is just such a great way for people to, to come together. Um, and, and, and how ironic, you know, like anyone who thought it was like a stunt, like getting Nancy, she won. You know, it's like, it, it's, I mean, I mean we, were, we were lucky that they that Clyde knew her and that she came to a game last year. That Rick Barry brought her to a game because, you know, she was saying thank you for giving us a chance, and I was like, what are you talking about? Like, you belong here. Thank you for giving us the chance because if she hadn't come to that game. She probably wouldn't have. She probably wouldn't have accepted it and known. But she saw it was cool and believed in it, and and, and she brought it. Um, so I'm just really proud of it. You know, I've, I've always been proud to, to work with Cube. He's he's truly he's truly authentic, and and he you heard the guys talk about him. There is no half-ass thing with him. So I remember, you know, we talked about it, we worked on this thing for a year. Every day, screaming at each other, yelling, rules, this, that. Really? Oh, there's so many, if I told you some of the crazy ideas and things, the way things came around, but there was that moment where, I was like, oh man, you really gonna do this now? <laughs> you know, and, it, it was, do we burn the ships? Right? He said, fuck yeah, let's burn the ships. And I knew that meant what those guys were talking about. And I knew that meant 24-7. Um, 
because he only does things one way. You know, he doesn't put his name on anything that he doesn't believe in, doesn't know. He's gonna give it a thousand percent. Then it fouls, then it fouls, you know? You take chances, but nothing that guy will ever do um, will fail because he didn't give his hundred percent. And that's why I love him. That's why we're together so long. That's why I'm with these people. Um, it's a dream come true. That's what I want to say. Well, I just want to add one thing. You all saw me turn the beer bottle around at one point, and I want to make it very clear, I didn't turn it around because it's a beer bottle. Earlier today, the big three rang the closing bell on NASDAQ. We are a business phenom now, and I don't think that this beer brand should get free signage. So I simply turned it around so its logo would not be facing you, because until they want to pass, mm -mm. And that would be my business background. <laughs> Thank you guys all for supporting. You know, please. You know, th we really appreciate it. It's not all good, you know. Sometimes we deserve to have our face slapped. Sometimes we deserve kudos. But either way, we, 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 we deserve the attention because we work hard and the players really work hard. They really, really care. And uh, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, of yeah. So there's been a lot of talk about Kobe, but I got another person on the radar that I'm, that I'm curious about. That's Manu Ginobili. If he does actually retire from the Spurs, will you guys do everything you can to bring him in? Are you going to chance? Well, we're going to do everything short of stalking Manu. <laughs> he, he's a perfect big three player. He can handle it off the dribble. He's a good two-way player, and he plays with passion. That's what the big three is all about. Guys who still love the game, who can get it done, and because now it's half court, and you get a week between games, these guys can still be who they are. And so the big three is made for Manu, and we're gonna try to get his teammate, Tim Duncan, as well, as well as Kobe, and anyone else that we think would, would be a great fit to help these teams win in the big three. Any more questions? You guys have so much positive momentum going, you know, this year, really just hit, really skyrocket. Like, what is next for the league? Like, what, what can people look for going forward? I was, I was having this marquee signing, you know, sponsorship deals been coming up. So <coughs> what's next for the league? Like, what, what would be the next step going forward? Well, that's the co founder and stuff. I mean, I think the, you know, the difference between year one and two was. You know, look, it's the most played sport in the world. I say that all the time. But when you bring professionals who have huge, you know, um, basketball IQ, whether it's at coaches like Nancy, you know, or, or, or Cooper, um, or these players, the game evolves. And the game will get better because people will learn how it is a different game than 5 on 5 basketball. Um, and look, 3-3 three and three is popular everywhere in the world, so, you know, we want to bring what, you know, what we do to a lot of places in the world, and, you know, we just want, we, we want to keep getting better, so, but we'll figure all that out starting Monday, because <laughs> I'll be sleeping until then. You know, we're not, we're honestly not focused on, on, on like, Give us one night. On, on the specific thing. There's, you know, the thing that makes Big Three special is, is, is player empowerment, players feeling good, the camaraderie, and the speed, the quickness. There's a, the, there's a, there's a change going on in professional sports, you know, where, you know, our audience is young. Our audience is younger than the NBA and the NFL, um, especially Major League Baseball, by a lot, you know, by a generation, you know? And you would think, how did we get a younger, I mean, I have people from the NFL ask me, you know, they cornered me on a plane, <laughs> and, 
Like, how are you getting 18 to 34s? Because we can't figure it out, you know? What are you doing? And we're not gonna tell them. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, that, that's really the, that, that's really what we wanna keep doing. You know, we, we, we wanna, we wanna give a product that or, or sport that, that, that kids and that and next generation love. And, and listen, 70, 80 year old guys love it too. You know, women love it too. You know, but our audience is very young. It's very diverse, uh, much more diverse than the other leagues. Um, we're in a lot of countries. People watch hundreds of millions of our highlights. Excuse me, um, we're broadcasting 47 countries around the world. Yeah, people watch. You know, our, our TiVo numbers are way higher than, than than most sports. Our repeats are watched um, much higher, and it's because people want to see passion. You know, the example I use is like I grew up. I love the band The Police, but when they got back together, everyone knew they hated each other. They were just doing a cash grab, and. So I didn't go. Like, you were police then, why do you go? I said, why do I want to go see people not have fun? It's like why, frankly, why I gave up my Knicks tickets. I had, I had so much fun on the sideline. Of the, I had courtside Knicks tickets for eight years. Four of them. It was a time of my life. But uh, after the Oakley thing and what they did to Mello, and, you know, I, I don't want to watch guys not have fun. Like, that was the coolest thing about Golden State. Before they were Golden State, the dominant. Like, when they first started up, they, they were like, man, you guys are having fun. And whether it's music, you know, whether it's sports, whether it's other types of entertainment, you know, what we saw today with these teams and really giving it, they're having fun. And that's what young people want to see. They want to see that people are doing things that they believe in. You know, I mean, some things people get paid well for, some things they don't. But hopefully, either way, they're doing it because they believe in it. And uh, that is the most important thing. And, and, and that's what we want to embody. So. Last question? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's good to talk to y'all in person. Jeff first, he's just presented. It's actually a question for Clyde. Um, how hard was it, or maybe how proud were you to see your former team walk away from the stage of that title? And two, I will help you try to get monumented into the big three. Oh, uh, hey, you. We're going to sign before, him up? Before you answer that, I don't know if you were in the room when Nancy explained that yeah. you had a full cover oh, yeah. that you turned, her, turned over to. Yeah, Nancy is yeah. too kind. Nancy did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Uh, her. her her ability to get guys to come together is unprecedented. What do you call her? The basketball whisperer. Well, then you are cute. You call her the basketball whisperer because she can get guys to believe in themselves, come together, play as a team, and they usually win. Nancy has got what it takes. She's got she's got that magic it. You know, she has it. And don't you just love that by the time they landed, they already had the game tape? with the X's and O's, sorry, my analogy. I mean, don't you, she worked her ass off. <laughs> she works hard, constantly. Nancy, when she got the job, she called me the very next day. She wanted a tape of all of last year's games. <laughs> That's typical Nancy, right? And a whole lot of other stuff. So that lets you know how much work she puts into her craft. And there's no surprise when she's very successful. She works her butt off. And the other coaches work as well. But I knew Nancy was a competitor, and she'd come in, take the ball, and, and just take off running with it. Now, Corey Maggette is the captain of power. He is the guy that chose Glenn Big Baby Davis on the recommendation <laughs> of, of the guy to my left, right? He did. Yeah. He did. And so Chris Anderson, Corey Maggette drafted Chris Birdman Anderson. He picked up Ryan Gomes who was injured, but a very good player. Quentin Richardson, those are guys, those are some great pickups. Xavier Salas, and then Katino Mobley was phenomenal last year. He was the only guy on that team that I coached. 
So it's a team unfamiliar to me. You know, Corey McGetty was injured in game one. And so to see him come back and win the MVP lets you know how good he would have been last season. But Nancy, it's all Nancy. It's all Corey McGetty. And I am not going to take any of that credit because it's not fair. Those guys, Nancy is phenomenal. Uh, you know, to say that she is probably the most prepared coach I've ever been around is an understatement. Right? And then Corey McGetty, in terms of class, the way he can. Con the way he conducts himself he as a team captain, he is nothing but a class individual. And so to see him win the MVP and to come out and have a, a, a healthy season, especially after recovering from an Achilles heel injury last season, was, was just phenomenal. And so to see them win gave me great pleasure, but they deserved it. They were the number one seed. They beat the best teams all season long. And whenever Power played every single weekend, they were always the toast of the big three. Three's company was right there with it. And so was the three-headed monsters. But when you are the toast of the league and everyone's after you week after week, you know, I have to tip my hat to them for, for, for just remaining professional, continuing to compete, keep their head down until they actually won the championship. So kudos to Team Power. I just want to say one thing about the, the classiness of Corey. You know, he got hurt last year, like I said, and, and, and I had neck surgery last year. Um, and he was the first guy to call me. He called me every day. And he's like, he's hurt, you know, and he's going through his regimen, but he's calling me and covering me and like, and, and wasn't like, you know, he, he didn't need to kiss my ass or anything. It, it, I need him, you know. He, the guy cares. He's a good human. I'm really, I'm really happy for him. He's a good human being. Lastly, I'd like to say one more thing about Corey McGetty. Last year in game one, he went down. He had 15 points in the first half. Yeah. And we were up at half. He came out the second half and he pulled his Achilles, right, tore it. Two days later, he sent me a video of him with one leg on like a little slide thing. The, the affected leg was up, and he was pushing this thing with one leg like a scooter, saying he's getting ready for next season. Oh, wow. If that doesn't tell you a lot about Corey McGetty, nothing will. And for about the next six days, he showed me his progression. <laughs> I mean, the guy is incredible. But that's why that team is, is, is a champion, because they actually put in the work, they take care of themselves, they are the ultimate professionals. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody.